Olá, colegas. Sou Richard Felder, professor de Engenharia Química na Universidade Estadual da Carolina do Norte, nos Estados Unidos. É para todos de vocês que estudaram no meu livro Princípios Elementares dos Processos Químicos, lamento muito a dor que causei a vocês. Eu sei que os problemas são tão longos, muito longos. Os meus estudantes americanos já me disseram muitas, muitas vezes. Mas posso lhes garantir, eles que persistiram e uh, acabaram de estudar inteligentemente, uh, tive sucesso em engenharia química em curso. E se continuaram a estudar inteligentemente, uh, tiveram sucesso nos seus outros cursos. Bem, mais tarde nesta palestra, uh, direi a vocês como estudar inteligentemente. Primeiro, porém, gostaria de contar-lhes uh, um pouco sobre mim. Eu tive a prazer uh, de visitar o Brasil várias vezes, muitos, muitos anos atrás. Duas vezes como consultor de pesquisa uh, no Instituto de Pesquisas Radioativas em Belo Horizonte. E depois disso, uh, várias vezes como professor visitante uh, à Unicamp em Campinas e à Universidade de Viçosa. Nessas visitas uh, aprendi a falar português mal como vocês podem ver. Uh, neste ponto, já esqueci, mas que uh, me lembro. Mas aprendi bastante uh, para dizer as coisas em português mais importantes. Uh, bom dia, tudo bem? Obrigado. Uh, onde é o banheiro? Um, pode me uh, medir uma caipirinha, por favor? mas não o suficiente para dar uma palestra inteira, completa. Então, neste ponto, vou mudar para o inglês. So here's what I plan to do in this short talk, and I promise you it will be short. I'll talk a little bit about myself and how I got into chemical engineering. So when I was in high school many, many years ago, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I grew up. At that time, there was a wonderful job market for chemical engineers, for engineers in general. And we kept hearing stories about how if you graduated in engineering, you would get lots of job offers and high starting salaries. I knew nothing about engineering. I didn't know what engineers did. But I liked the idea of high starting salaries and lots of job offers. And so, like many of my classmates, I decided that I would go into engineering. But then I had to make the decision, what branch of engineering should I go into? Years before that, my parents had given me a chemistry set. And I really liked it. And I thought the idea of pouring two colorless liquids together and seeing them turn green was very, very cool. And so I decided, okay, I'll become a chemical engineer. And so I went to college and I enrolled in chemical engineering. I had never met a chemical engineer. I had no idea what chemical engineers actually do, but that was my decision. It's a crazy way to decide what you're going to do for the next 50 years of your life, but that's what I did. And it turned out that I was very, very lucky. Finally, I want to give you a suggestion for how to study intelligently, which was what I said was the key to succeeding in the chemical engineering curriculum, studying intelligently. What does that mean? Well, I'd like to um, say a few things about how your brain works when you're learning something. When our brains learn something, a name, the definition of enthalpy, how to calculate the volume of 10 gram moles of hydrogen, 
at 183 degrees Celsius and 275 kilobars, whatever the information is that you learn goes into your long-term memory. And once it's in there, it stays in there, and at least in principle, you can retrieve it, recover it, remember it when there's a need for it. There's one problem. When you first learn something, the network of nerve cells that holds that information is not very well connected. It's loosely connected. And so the first time you learn something, it can be very hard to retrieve it. Like when you meet someone for the first time, and then a day or two later, you see them again, and you have a lot of trouble remembering their name, or you just simply can't remember their name. The information is in your brain, in your long-term memory, but you just cannot retrieve it. That's what happens to people. The good news is that every time you retrieve information, that neural network becomes stronger, and it's easier to retrieve it next time you want to. The more you retrieve something, the better you know it. Now, think about how students study. The usual way that students study is something like this. The night before the exam, they reread things. They reread their textbook. They look over their lecture notes again. They reread problems, the solutions to problems that they did at homework or on tests. And after they've looked over it, they believe that they're now ready for the exam, that they understand those materials, and they're probably wrong because they haven't retrieved anything. If all you do is pass your eyes over information, you're not retrieving it, and so you're not strengthening those neural networks. And the chances are that if you didn't really understand it before, that when it comes up again on the test, like if you get a problem that's similar to the one that you read the night before, you're not going to be able to do it. And if the entire test consists of problems that are somewhat different from the ones that you read over the night before, there's a good chance you'll fail the test. Now, does that describe the way that you typically study for exams? If it does, and if you're not happy with the grades that you've been getting, you might think about trying it a different way. And here is the way of studying that the cognitive scientists recommend. Solve a lot of problems without looking back at the solutions. Take a problem that you had on an exam or in the textbook or on a homework assignment and try to solve it without looking at the solution. Don't solve it completely. Don't do all of the algebra and the arithmetic that it takes to solve all of the equations because that takes too much time and you're not learning anything from doing that. Just set up the solution of the problem, derive all of the equations you need, and when you're finished with that, go on to another problem. Now, if you can solve the problem completely without looking back, you know how to solve that problem, obviously. And if a similar problem comes up on the test, there's a good chance you'll be able to solve it. If you get stuck on a problem solution, if you get up to a certain point and you don't know how to continue, now you can look back at the solution, see what you needed to do to complete the solution, and then put the problem away. Right? Don't just continue with it, but put it aside and come back to it in another hour, in another three hours, maybe the next day and try to solve it again without looking back at the solution. And as long as you don't do the detailed calculations, you can go through a lot of problems that way, and that's what you need to do to study intelligently. And that way you'll do much better on the examinations than you would if you use the usual way of studying, which is to reread. And that's not just my opinion. I've got lots and lots of research data saying that students who study that way do much better than just by rereading. Finalmente, desejo-lhes boa sorte em seus estudos, desejo empregos desafiadores, cumpridos e bem remunerados, é uma carreira, é uma vida gratificante e feliz. É com isto 
Fini, eh, io finis, eh, finisco è italiano, disculpi. Uh, eh, uh, obrigado, molto obrigado per mi ascoltare e ciao.